Hello everyone. I hope that all of you are fine. Welcome to another lecture of robotics. In this lecture we shall study about robot dynamics. We shall study about how to model system using dynamic equations. If you remember from the previous lecture we did system modeling using uh, kinematics equations. We develop models for kinematics of the robotic manipulators and also the inverse kinematics. In this lecture, we shall uh, study about how to model the robot or a system uh, with dynamic equation. So just to clarify some basic concepts, so let's start with a term called modeling. So what is modeling? Modeling is the process of representing a system with mathematical or physical model. Okay. So when you have a system, okay, and you represent this system using either a mathematical equation or some kind of scale down physical model. So this process is called modeling. And what is a model? Model mimics the behavior of the original system. So you have here a physical system. And so what you are going to do is uh, you represent this system in, in, in the form of mathematical equations. So this is called, so this process is called uh, modeling. So for example, you have a, a robot, okay? Um, so one way is you have a physical robot and you actually perform kinematics on this robot, okay? You, uh, you, uh, you enter some values on its microcontroller and then run the code and then the robots move to a certain position according to your joint angles. The second way is you, you make a model of this system, of this robot. In the, you have now mathematical equations and then you give input to this mathematical equation and then you get output uh, which, uh, which is same as the physical system. So this is an advantage of using a physical, sorry, using a mathematical model. You can model anything using mathematical equations. You can model a car, an aeroplane, a robot using mathematical equations. So the advantage is that you don't need to purchase or buy actually an, an aeroplane or a robot. You can just make its model and you can predict its behavior. That if you give this angle, what will be the output? position okay so this is the this process is called modeling now what is simulation the process of using the model to study the behavior characteristics and performance of a system is called simulation so once you have a mathematical model of a robot so then you give some inputs to this model and then you get some outputs. For example, you get joint angles and you get the position of the uh, end effector of the robotic manipulator. And uh, then you can now, you see that you are, uh, you are actually mimicking the 
original physical robot using the mathematical model and you're also studying its behavior its characteristics and also the performance parameters so this process of um, of mimicking the original physical system or a robot is called simulation there are two types of robot models the one we already studied is a kinematic model in the previous lecture we talked about the uh, how we can model a robot using a kinematic kinematic model so what is a kinematic model describes the robots motion without considering the forces that causing the motion so what we hear in a kinematic model what we are interested in only the position either linear position or angular position so we we know the joint angles the angular positions of the joint and we have some here some uh, function that transform these angles into the the position and orientation of your end effector notice that there are no forces involved here just only the motions or the positions so so these types of model is called kinematic model so this is uh, this is this equation it shows a kinematic model of a robot you don't need to actually buy a robot to or you have to uh, to find the relationship between the joint angle and the position of the your many end effector you just need this equation where k is any uh, a function that can transform these angles into into the position and orientation of the end effector to find the value of k just uh, just see the previous lectures another type of model is called the dynamic model a dynamic model describes the relation between the motions of the robot and the forces that causes the motion so in a dynamic model we um, we also study motion but in addition to motion we also need to um, include the forces or torques that causes this motion and remember that in the kinematic model we just ignore the forces we were just concerned about the motion but here we have to study the torque or the forces for example a kinematic uh, sorry a dynamic model might be look like this where the your applied torque or applied force is equal to the uh, the inertia inertia of your system where m is the inertia matrix and q double dot is the either linear acceleration or the angular acceleration and then you have the and these kind of uh, uh, centripetal uh, torques or forces terms and then you have some gravity uh, gravity torque vector here and finally you have some friction the the torque or the forces that causes friction so just keep in mind that whatever you the torque or the force that you apply to the the link or the joint of the robot it will eventually transform into the moment of inertia of the robot link uh, some centripetal forces and also work has to be done against gravity and also some of the your torque will be dissipated in terms of friction so this is the typical example of how a dynamic equation looks like or sometimes we just ignore friction we ignore some forces and then this equation will be uh, simplified further the torques acting on the robotic manipulator are caused by so again here 
Um, there are different types of torques that are being acted on a robotic arm. So the torque can be from inertial forces that we have mentioned here. This M term, MQ double or this is M. This is the acceleration into mass, which is shows that your applied torque is converted into inertial force or inertial torque. The second type of torque can be a centripetal or Coriolis forces. Third type of torques caused by frictional forces, a term here due to frictional force, friction between the, the joints. And then the fourth type of torque can be from gravitational forces. We shall study later how gravity creates a torque. And then forces on the end effector caused by load or task. So whenever there can be torque caused by a force uh, coming from the a load attached to an end effector. So in, in this case, you have to do a work against this lifting this load. So yeah, so these were the torques and forces uh, found in the manipulator, and together adding up, they they sum up to create uh, torque that is that counteracts with your applied torque which is which is coming from motor okay so this torque here it's this is applied torque by your motor to the joint of the robot and then it is dissipated in the form of inertia in the form of centripetal forces in the form of gravitational forces and friction So now let's move toward the next slide. There are two types of robot dynamics. So one is called the forward dynamics and second is inverse dynamics. It seems like we did in kinematics. We have we had uh, forward kinematics and inverse kinematics. In forward kinematics, if you remember, we had the and joint angles were given and you have to find the position of your end effector but in inverse kinematics you um, the position of your end effector was given but you have to find the position of your joints the angles so in case of dynamics we have uh, forward dynamics and in forward dynamics so the vector of joint torques is given. So you have given with the torques, find the resulting motion of the robot. And so you have to find the, the resulting motion, the, uh, the positions of the, you can say the, the angles you can, you have to find. So, if this is a one link robot then the torque is given how much torque is applied and then you have to find the position of the of its joints uh, in inverse dynamics so the vector of robots positions velocities and acceleration are given find the required vector of joint torque so in this case it is um, other way around in this case you have you're given with the position velocities and accelerations and you have to find the uh, torque so how much torque must be applied to the joints so that to get the desired position velocity and acceleration but in case of forward dynamics, it was other way around. The torque applied was given, okay? And you have to find the position of the joints or their velocities or their accelerations. Why we need robot dynamics? Actually, you remember that we in the previous lecture, we talked about why we need kinematics. 
kinematics was useful for, for, for example, forward kinematics was useful for the to for the simulation of a robotic arm. Okay, and then there was uh, inverse kinematics where you have to find the joint angles, and this case was useful for control of the robot. In case of robot dynamics, the dynamics is important in the situations, for example, it can be used for simulation of a robot. So when you are developing with uh, developing a robot model, so there are different types of models we, we have. Uh, it depends upon what you are looking for. For example, there can only be a kinematic model, okay? And then if you want more detail that your your model should look realistic according to real world, okay? Then you also have to add some dynamics to it. You have to add a mass, you have to add some friction, you have to add some acceleration forces. So, so this all things, uh, they will make your robot look closer to the actual real world robot okay so yeah so uh, for the simulation it is important and also to design a suitable controller for robot uh, to design a suitable controller you need to have an accurate model of the robot okay if you want to gonna control your robot position then you need an accurate controller for that, you need a more detailed model of your robot. So that's why robot dynamics is important. We need a dynamic equation or a dynamic model of the robot so that we can simulate a robot and control all the robot also. So in short, we can say that robot dynamics, what we are doing in robot dynamics is we have joint torques given and we calculate the motion of the robot which is acceleration, velocity, position. Or we are given, given with the robot's motion, we are given with the acceleration, velocity, position and we want, we want to calculate the joint torques. And this thing we cannot do using only kinematic model, we need we must need a dynamic model of the robot. Now let's see how we can model a robot. Um, that uh, we include its dynamics, how we can make a dynamic model of the robot. So basically there are two methods to model the dynamic behavior of a robot. Or any system. The first approach is called Newton Euler formulation. So this approach is used basically use uh, uh, Newton's equation of motions you can say. So it uses uh, Newton's equations of motions and um, so what it does it try to balance all the forces and torques and it says that sum of all the forces either equal to um, zero or you can say the applied forces are equal to the dissipated forces or you can also say sum of all the torques is equal to zero. So this is the Newton method. And then there is another method, it's called Lagrange formulation. In the Lagrange formulation, we use energy-based approach. So we say that we uh, calculate the kin kinetic energy
and also we calculate the potential energy and based on these energies we try to model the dynamic behavior of the of your robot um, we shall briefly have a, a very uh, simple example for both but eventually we shall stick to the Lagrange formulation because this is um, this is more advanced approach this is more uh, systematic approach and yeah I personally I personally prefer this approach as compared to Newton approach so whenever we model our robot we shall prefer modeling with Lagrange formulation but we also should know about the Newton's approach so let's <clears throat> see how Newton approach to dynamic modeling works so let us consider an object under the gravitational force equal to mg so here you see that we have an object here this red color object and it is um, two forces are acting on it one is the gravitational force which is acting downward and then then there is a force that is applied to this object and it is acting upward opposite to your gravitational force and the uh, and the movement the motion is along the uh, you can say y-axis and h is the uh, coordinate you can say h is the generalized coordinate where the motion is being is happening okay to write down the equation of motion for this dynamic system we we use Newton's approach so usually what the in the Newton approach as we already discussed we use Newton's equation of motions and where it says that sum of all the forces is equal to uh, mass into acceleration and so this is not sum this is force is equal to mass into acceleration and we, then we can use a sum of all the forces equal to zero or this can be also translated to that applied force is equal to force dissipated so applying Newton's method to the system given in the figure above we get so here we apply when the Newton's method we see that this is our applied force and this is the downward force which is acting downward so applied force uh, minus the the downward force is equal to um, m h double dot okay we, we are using this equation here um, this equation so it says that the forces that is uh, that are acting on the robot or, uh, on this on this uh, object their sum is equal to mass into acceleration so so actually these both so here we we can it means it's okay to write the sum yeah so I think we can write here the sum and we can write here also so this is also if, if we take this term in this here then sum of all the forces will become zero yeah so using this equation above so it means that sum of these two forces will result in this motion which is m h double dot where m is the mass of an object g is the gravitational acceleration and h is the height 
The above second order differential equation is the dynamic model of the systems of the system given in the above figure. So it means that this to write the dynamic model of this system, this object, we can use this equation here. Okay. And this equation says that applied force is equal to the motion about uh, your generalized coordinate h plus the gravitational force. So it means that whatever force you apply on the object, it will be translated to the motion of the of your object plus it, the work done against the gravity. Okay. So this is. Uh, this is the dynamic model of the system. Is it, it's that simple. Just use the Newton equation of motion and just say that sum of all the forces is equal to either zero or mass into acceleration and then put the values of the forces. And remember that these are not always forces. They can also be torques. So this is the Dynamic, dynamic model and remember that we said that in the dynamic model there is always forces and motions involved so here you have motion and you can calculate the force or you have a force you can calculate the motion so this was one method to model a dynamic system now let's see another method to calculate the dynamic system and this second method, we already know that it's called Lagrange's approach for dynamic modeling. Consider again the same object acted by a gravitational force equal to mg and an upward force f of t as shown in the figure. So this time again, we have same object and it is applied force is f of t and the downward force is gravitational force mg and the generalized coordinate of motion is h to write its dynamic equation using lagrange's method we need to find kinetic and potential energies of system so now we want to write the dynamic equation of this motion of this object or this system so what what's a lagrange's approach says according to lagrange's approach the dynamic equation of the motion of a system is it can be written as this this equation this is the equation of motion using lagrange's approach so what it this equation of motion says that this is a time derivative d over dt this is a time derivative and this partial derivative partial lagrange lagrangian this is a symbol for a special symbol for lagrangian and later we see that how what's this lagrangian l and then partial derivative with respect to velocity this q is the motion uh, coordinate okay motion um, variable you can say and this dot means derivative of this so for example if it's a linear motion it will be x dot which is a linear velocity if it's a angular motion then it will be theta dot which is an angular velocity then we have minus then partial derivative of Lagrangian over partial derivative of your motion variable either theta or it can also be x or y or z whatever this is equal to tau tau is the applied force or torque it depends upon what your uh, system is what is the input to your system is so we name this equation a and this equation is a generalized equation of motion according to Lagrange's approach. 
So where Lagrangian is the Lagrangian and Q dot is the velocity and Q is the displacement or position. Actually, this is Q is the motion variable. Tau is the torque or it can also be force. To find Lagrangian, we use following equation. So what is Lagrangian? Lagrangian is just a, is a difference between the kinematic, kinetic and potential energy of a system. So you, this is a K is a kinetic energy of a system and P is the potential energy of a system. And then you take a difference and you get the Lagrangian. And then you put this Lagrangian here in the equation A and then you take its partial derivative with respect to velocity and then take the derivative again with respect to time and then subtract this term from the partial derivative of Lagrangian which comes from here and take its partial derivative with respect to position and then subtract these two terms to get the uh, the value which is equal to your applied force or torque. So this is the second method to model the dynamic equation, a dynamic system. For the system given in the above figure, we use the Lagrange's equation for its dynamic modeling. So for our system that we have described here, now let's try to model this system with respect to uh, using the Lagrange's approach. So what Lagrange's approach says that first you need to calculate the, the kinetic energy and potential energy. And then once you have the kinetic and potential energies, then you take a difference and get that Lagrangian. And then use this equation to find the equation of motion. So so that's what we are doing here. We have here the, first of all, we, we need the uh, Lagrangian and which is the, which is the difference between the kinetic and potential energy. So what's the kinetic energy of the system? You know that kinetic energy is half mv square. Okay. We can write here. K is equal to half mv square and p is equal to mgh. So putting the values here, we have um, velocity along this x axis, which is our h. So if we take a derivative of h, we get the velocity. Okay, you because velocity is the derivative of displacement time derivative. So that's what we have represented here, half mh dot square. And then minus the potential energy, which is mgh. Now take partial derivative with respect to h dot. So because we have to use this equation A, we have already calculated Lagrangian because we have calculated the difference of the kinetic and potential energy and which is Lagrangian. Now we have to put this Lagrangian here and then we have to take the partial derivative with respect to velocity. So that's what we are doing here. We are taking here the partial derivative of Lagrangian with respect to the velocity which is h dot and this is equal to uh, Lagrangian is equal to the difference of kinetic and potential energy. If you take the derivative then uh, this term here, it will be, uh, this is a constant, 1 by 2 and m is a constant, it will remain like this. And h dot, if you take a derivative of h dot square, it will be 2 will be multiplied here and 2 minus 1 is 1 and its derivative will be, and this 2 and this two will get cancelled, so it will be aim m h dot, so which means mass into velocity minus this. This terms become 
zero because this is a this is a uh, because here uh, with respect to velocity this is a constant okay if we take a partial derivative with respect to velocity uh, this is a constant if you take a derivative of constant it will be zero so your final answer will be m h dot which means that mass into velocity we name this equation as equation 2 now take the time derivative of equation 2 why we are doing it because again according to Lagrangian uh, Lagrange's approach we have to first take the partial derivative which we have already done now we have to take that time derivative here so that's what we are doing here we are taking the time derivative of our uh, equation 2 which says that d over dt of the partial derivative of Lagrangian uh, over partial derivative of, with respect to velocity and this is equal to d by dt over of m h dot so if you take a derivative time derivative of m h dot it will be m h double dot because of the derivative of velocity is acceleration and m is constant we name this equation as equation 3 now take the partial derivative of equation 1 with respect to h so for Lagrange's approach we also need this term here where we are taking partial derivative of Lagrangian with respect to position so that's what we are doing here we are taking partial derivative of Lagrangian with respect to the position and if you do that uh, partial derivative of this term will be zero because uh, here we don't have any position variable all of them are constant so this velocity is actually a variable but since we are only taking partial derivative with respect to the uh, position so in this case this will also be treated as constant and all term will become zero and then we have a second term where we have a variable h the position and if you take a another two are the constant and if you take the partial derivative of this term it will be minus mg so the answer will be minus mg and this we name this equation as equation 4 now we have calculated all the terms related to the equation of motion according to the Lagrange's approach you just have to put the values of this term and this term and also here this term so the put the calculated values of equation 3 and equation 4 in the equation a what we get here m h dot minus minus mg which is comes from here and m h dot comes from here and is it dot or is it double dot yes it's double dot it's not m h dot it's m h double dot so let me correct it here so this is single dot here and the answer is double dot so here the answer will be m h double dot and minus minus mg is equal to applied force or applied torque so in this our case we have the applied torque is actually applied force which is acting upward in this figure this is applied force upward so we put the value of tau is equal to f of t we put it in the equation here and we get this nice dynamic equation of motion which says that the if you apply a force f f of t on an on an object under gravity this force will be uh, compensated by the gravitational force which is acting downward and also is this force will result in the motion equal to m h double dot we name this equation 5 which is the dynamic model of the system equation 5 is the dynamic model of the above system and it is same 
as the equation derived by Newton's approach. So if you remember that um, the Newton approach, what was the dynamic model there? So this was here, mh double dot plus mg is equal to ft. So here we have same. So you see that, um, or you can rewrite it to look like same mh double dot plus mg. So you see that it doesn't matter if you model the system using Lagrangian Lagrange's method or Newton method, the equation of motion, dynamic equation of motion will be same. So in this simple example, you see that um, Newton approach looks very easier, only just one or two steps. But here Lagrange's approach, it looks a little bit uh, difficult but for complex systems this this is other way around if you have if your system is complex there are a lot of variables involved a lot of forces a lot of torques then this method becomes actually easier to model your system so that's why we stick with this approach So we have seen a very simple basic example how to model a, a, a dynamic system and for in case of robotics let's see how we can model our robot using uh, Lagrange's approach um, how we can get the dynamic model of the system so let's take an example and consider a single link manipulator as shown in the figure. So we have here a single link robotic manipulator and we have here the fixed joint and then there is a link here and the length of this link is L and apparently if uh, there is some kind of torque acting on this uh, torque acting on this robot this torque is coming from the motor, let's say, the motor that's attached with this robot. And so the first step we do is we draw the free body diagram because it's easier to work with. So we have drawn the free body diagram. This is a link, black color line. This is a joint and the torque T is applied torque on this link robotic arm link and the center of the mass here this is the center of the mass so the gravitational force we we always consider that it's acting on the center of your whole mass okay and so that's why we say that the force acting downward mg is acting on the center of this link and the length of the center is L by 2. The motion coordinate of this robot is actually this theta. So this link is rotating about, uh, about an axis, let's say z-axis. And the, the, the motion variable is theta. So now we have a free body diagram. To find the dynamic model or the equation of motion of a single link manipulator, we shall use Lagrange's approach. So what we are interested in, we are inter interested in finding a dynamic equation or a, or a dynamic model of this robot uh, which can relate the applied torque to the motions, to the acceleration, velocity and position of this robotic arm. So again, we just follow the steps. So first you need to identify what are the generalized coordinates here or where along which coordinates, which axis the motion is happening. Okay. 
for in this case the motion is or is the rotation about z axis we say and the motion variable is theta so you, you need to identify this variable theta once you have done it the second step is you have to find the kinetic energy why we are doing it because we need to put values of the uh, of the kinetic energy potential energy to find the Lagrangian and then we have to also put the values of Lagrangian and take its derivative and partial derivative to solve the the equation of motion using the Lagrange's approach so how we can calculate the kinetic energy we know that kinetic energy is equal to half mv square and in our case because we have a rotation okay so we can write it as 1 by 2 j theta dot square what is the j j is the No. this is we have uh, center of mass is C and J is the J is the uh, moment of inertia because you remember when the mass is rotating okay so we are we use J which is the moment of inertia so in this case there is a rotation so we shall use J instead of M and we shall use theta instead of x or y as a link has only rotational motion so the j is the moment of inertia of the link and theta dot is the angular velocity of the link so just put the values of j and theta dot and this you get the kinetic energy of this uh, robotic manipulator the third step is to find the to calculate the potential energy of your of this link we know that potential energy is equal to mgh so in this case if you see the free body diagram of the this link uh, you see that this is your center of mass here and this length is l by 2 because the center of mass is on the middle of the link so this force is acting downward we have angle theta and what we are interested in we we have the mass we have the the gravity they are constant and the value of h this is a variable this is changing because as the link moves rotates this h will become bigger or smaller okay so how to calculate the h we can we can solve this uh, using the this right angle triangle here let's say h is a perpendicular and we also have the the uh, the hypotenuse of this triangle and what you need to do is you know we know that the uh, we can find the h which is the l by 2 if we multiply this with the with the sine theta okay so that's what we did here so instead of h we have put l by 2 into sine theta so that's how we have converted the this length into this height or you can say that we have converted the length and the angle to the height or the other way around we have converted the height into length and theta and finally we get the potential energy which is equal to 1 by 2 mgl sine theta so this is the potential energy now we have calculated the kinetic and potential energies now we calculate the Lagrangian we know that this is equal to Lagrangian is equal to k minus p just take the difference of these two terms 1 by 2 j theta dot square minus 1 by 2 mgl sine theta so now you have the lagrangian also calculate the partial derivative of lagrangian with respect to theta dot so we take its partial derivative of this term here 
with respect to theta dot with respect to velocity when we take the partial derivative uh, this term uh, when the this is constant j and 1 by 2 is constant and we take the derivative of theta dot square 2 will come here down multiply and it will it will cancel by this 2 and then we have only theta dot so we have only j theta dot here and then we have the second term these all are constant with respect to theta dot okay and then this term will become 0 and the answer will be j theta dot the next step is to next step is to calculate the time derivative of this term that we have calculated in the step 5 so we have calculated this term here which was j theta dot we take the time derivative of this and the time derivative of a variable can be shown as theta double dot okay this is a constant it will remain like this and the final answer will be j theta double dot calculate the partial derivative of Lagrangian with respect to theta so now again we have a Lagrangian and we take its partial derivative with respect to theta so in this case this term will become 0 because they are all constant with respect to position and this term will be this is constant and the this is a variable and if you take the derivative of a sine theta it will be cosine theta so your final answer will be minus 1 by 2 mgl cosine theta and in the step 8 we put the calculated values in the Lagrange's equation of motion we know that this was a Lagrange's equation of motion and you just have calculated the values in the previous steps you just have to put the values so from step 6 and step 7 put the values in above equation so step 6 says that this term is equal to j theta double dot we put here j theta double dot here in this term you have put here j theta double dot and for in place of this term we have put this this calculated value and in in the place of tau which is applied tau we have put t in our case which is specific torque that is being applied to this single link robotic manipulator so this minus minus become plus and the final equation will be j theta double dot plus 1 by 2 mgl cosine theta is equal to applied torque so it says that whatever you apply the torque on this robotic link it will be translated into the uh, into the motion of the robot also the torque will be used against the gravitational torque okay and keep in mind that we have in this case we have ignored the, the frictional forces or the or the frictional torques um, so this will be your dynamic model of the single link robotic arm and this will be also you can see a equation of motion of your robotic arm so that's how we calculate the uh, dynamic models of the dynamic equation of motions of the system and now we shall end our lecture um, if you have any questions then feel free to contact me by email thank you very much